Hey guys, we're at the Department of Energy Joint Genome Institute, where scientists are using DNA from different organisms to become leaders in environmental research. For instance, they're studying plants like these for biofuels, and they're unlocking the keys to climate change with microbes. Some high schoolers are helping them out. Let's go see what they're doing. It's a place where you'll never know what kind of weird science you'll see, or just how cold things will get. How cold are those? Minus 80 degrees Celsius. But one thing's for sure. Scientists here at the U.S. Department of Energy Joint Genome Institute are on the cutting edge of research into climate change and global warming. And that includes these two lab coats, high school juniors Lindsay Pieper and Shalini Majumdar. We've been lab partners for two years already, and like so we already knew that we worked really well together, so we're really excited to do this together. They're helping researcher Rachel McElprang study permafrost and how it fits into the global warming picture. Permafrost holds a lot of carbon in its solid state, and when the permafrost starts to thaw, it activates these microbes which are living in the permafrost, and these microbes can consume the carbon and produce greenhouse gases. And once the greenhouse gases are released into the atmosphere, it can cause this positive feedback loop of thawing and warming. Lindsay and Shalini are here thanks to a joint partnership with the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab BLIPS program. They're focusing their efforts on one gene in particular. They have been looking at a particular gene that some of the microorganisms in the permafrost have. And this particular gene is very important in the production of methane. It's work that requires safety goggles and gloves, not to mention a lot of precision. Basically, we want to determine how much of this gene there is in the permafrost and um, its diversity uh, among the other known MCRA genomes already. As you can imagine, you've got to keep those samples cold in a freezer like this. These right here are samples from our ancient DNA projects, so for example, mammoth and Neanderthal. How cold does it get? To minus 80 degrees Celsius. Minus 80 degrees? Minus 80 degrees. Why does it have to be minus 80 degrees Celsius? Uh, because even over the very long term, uh, things can degrade, and also we have some very sensitive samples uh, that we need to keep that cold to preserve them. Somewhere it's not so cold, in here. It's where powerful computers sequence the genetic material. So these are the machines where we actually sequence the DNA. Okay. So that is we determine the order of all of the nucleotides, the A's, C's, T's, and G's, that make up the genomes of the many different samples that are sequenced here at the JGI. Essentially the information that's stored on the DNA, right? Yes, it's, it's the blueprint. The DNA is then placed on one of these flow cells and put in this machine. So in like a two inch piece of glass you have DNA? Yes. That's all DNA? DNA is on this piece of glass. Wow. Sequencing helps identify the microorganisms in permafrost soils. They're key to understanding how thawing impacts global warming. This has not been well studied because the permafrost actually hosts a diverse array of microorganisms and we haven't had enough sequencing capacity until recently to study those. It'll help us know how much permafrost will contribute to um, the emission of greenhouse gases to further understand climate change. It's an issue that these interns say is important. I think uh, climate change is an issue that um, everybody should know about, and I wanted to study it more, know more about it. When you can put biology and re research that includes environmental perspectives with biology, I think that's really important to being environmentally aware. As for what all this research means, they're just scratching the surface. We are only just starting to understand this. This will require uh, long-term studies, not only at uh, one or two different sites, but at permafrost locations uh, all over the Arctic. And so this is a very large problem uh, in the context of global warming. And it's a good thing these guys are on it.